of Emily and Grant, thank you for joining them in this day of celebration. Each of you holds a very special place in their hearts and they feel blessed that you've chosen to share with them in this special day. Today's the day they've chosen to pledge their lives to each other as husband and wife in this covenant of marriage, which is instituted in heaven by God. Emily, Grant, this is your special day. This is the day you've anticipated since that Saturday morning, November the 19th, 2016, when Grant secretly and romantically carried out his plan at the finish line of the 5K race at the ballpark in Jackson. Emily, you know he had to run hard to outrace you to get to the finish line. But he was there on one knee with engagement ring in hand and a wedding proposal upon his lips. Grant poured out his heart to you as he asked you if you would become his wife. And we're very thankful you said yes. Who gives Emily to be married to Grant? My sister and I. Very good. Stand over there, baby. Right. Several weeks ago, when you asked me if I would consider doing this, I gave you some homework to do. Uh, and I asked you three questions relating specifically about your future marriage. First one was describe when you first met each other and the feelings you had. Second one was what characteristics you saw in each other that drew you together. And third, what plans you have to make this a successful God-centered marriage. Your responses were very similar in nature and they obviously came from your joy-filled hearts. It just affirmed to me the love, the admiration, and respect you have in your hearts for each other. It's, obviously that, it's obvious that God has blessed each of you with amazing hearts for each other, for your families and friends. I know He will continue to mold and shape your hearts as you become one in marriage. Emily, you had some good, good answers to those questions. <laughs> After dating a short time in grade, uh, eighth grade, it wasn't until one day in high school that your paths crossed on the crosswalk going to your school buses that you really caught Grant's eye. You were dating someone and he had just didn't pursue the possibility of a relationship with you. He considered you out of his league. He still does today. You both headed off to college, but one night when you responded to a Facebook post from a mutual friend about a song lyric from Forever, Grant recognized your name and the conversation began. The conversation sparked an interest that he had never experienced before. He could not get you off his mind. He was hooked, he said, and left wondering, what if? This evening, the what if is coming full circle. While dating in college, you grew closer to each other and began to experience firsthand the qualities and the characteristics that you admire in each other. Emily, Grant loves that you're very family oriented. He admires that you're a very independent and extremely responsible young lady. He appreciates your unselfish heart. And he admires that you're very, uh, that he saw these qualities, this unselfish heart he saw these qualities in you when you encouraged and supported him when his grandfather was in declining health. The same quality Grant shared with you when your grandmother passed away. It was during this time that Grant realized, finally, he wanted to marry you. And he said he wanted to be there for you. He wanted to be your crutch to lean on. And he wants to be the one you trust and love. He wants to be your forever. You are his best friend. You encourage and inspire him. And with you by his side, he feels as husband and wife, you can accomplish anything. He wants to be the best husband and eventually the best father possible. Grant believes marrying you will be his greatest accomplishment ever. These words come from Grant's heart and his love for you. Grant. Emily remembers that eighth grade year a little bit more than you do. <laughs> Even though it was a short period of time, she recalled your first picture together at the Valentine's dance. But what she really remembers is the, well, let's just be friends conversation a few weeks after the dance. 
But then we kept our eye on you throughout high school as you crossed paths each day going to your school buses. The reconnecting college via the Facebook post rekindled a crush that Emily had had on you since the eighth grade. And over the past eight years of dating, Emily has grown to love and appreciate the qualities and attributes that make you the man you've become. She loves your genuine kindness and how you have a way of doing for others without making a big deal about it, especially little things you do to help her, like picking up things from the grocery, mowing the lawn, helping her in her classroom, and even cleaning out the litter box. <laughs> Emily's drawn to your dry sense of humor. She said your jokes make her smile and without your weird sense of humor, she feels your life would be quite boring. <laughs> she loves that you're always wanting to learn more. She has great admiration for your desire to gain knowledge and wisdom in every area of your life. The knowledge and lessons you learn from your grandfather about cars, jobs, and family will not only enrich your marriage, but they can be passed on when you and Emily start your own family. The fact that you and Emily are very methodical and have a balanced, thoughtful planning and flexibility will set you on a path for a very successful and fulfilling marriage. Your aspirations to grow together and enjoy your time together hiking, running 5K races, your careers and all your mutual interests will draw you closer and closer together as husband and wife. Emily wants to always be your best friend, Grant. Her wish is to go through life with you, making wonderful memories and being pleased with how you live your lives together as husband and wife. These words come from Emily's heart and her love for you. God's blessed each of you with many skills and talents and abilities. His desire for you is to use these blessings in your marriage to always honor each other and especially to bring glory and honor to Him. I want to encourage you to embrace a life by the Holy Spirit. Let your lives always be filled with love, joy, peace and patience, kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. This will bring much joy and peace into your life as husband and wife. There is no doubt God brought you together for many reasons. You will not only be husband and wife, but you will become the love of each other's life. The Bible tells us that God is love. In 1 Corinthians 13, the Apostle Paul provides us with a very vivid description of how God views love. Love is patient, love is kind. It doesn't envy and it does not boast. It's not proud and it's not rude. It's not self-seeking and it's not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. And now you have faith and hope and love. And these characteristics, these virtues, must characterize your lives as husband and wife. And always remember that the greatest of these is love. Love for each other, love for your family, and above all, love for God. I want to challenge you to bury these words deep into your hearts, and each day as you travel in this journey together as husband and wife, search your hearts and draw strength and courage from the love God's blessed you with. There's no doubt over the past year, eight years, you've become best friends, and the love, admiration, and respect you have for each other will provide you with a very strong foundation as you enter into this marriage covenant. There will be times of joy, triumph, contentment, and exhilaration. Give thanks to God. But when the storm clouds bring challenging and trying times, stand firm in your faith and trust in God. Stand strong, arm in arm, as husband and wife, surrounding yourself with family and friends who love you, who will support you, and encourage you as you face difficult times. Knowing good times and difficult times lie ahead, I strongly encourage you to be disciplined in the good habits that you've already established and have nurtured during your courtship. Communicate. Communicate openly and honestly. Laugh together. Laugh with each other. Laugh at each other. 
kind of like the time in Mexico on the banana boat ride when you almost died? <laughs> and laugh at yourself. Grant, <laughs> like the time you thought chest of drawers was <laughs> spelled and pronounced Chester drawers. <laughs> waiting on that. Develop a mindset of selflessness, sacrifice, and humility towards each other. Spend time in God's Word each day. Seek the wise counsel and comfort of the Holy Spirit. And in all circumstances, pray with each other daily about everything. Be thankful for all your blessings, and above all, put Christ first in every aspect of your life. Remember the triangle. Emily, Grant, you've chosen vows to express your love, your devotion, and your lifelong commitment to each other as you enter into this marriage covenant. Emily, please repeat after me. I, Emily. I, Emily. Take you, Grant. Take you, Grant. To be my lawfully wedded husband. To be my lawfully wedded husband. My constant friend. My constant friend. My faithful partner. My faithful partner. And my love from this day forward. My love for this day forward. In the presence of God. In the presence of God. Our family and friends. Our family and friends. I offer you my solemn vow. I offer you my solemn vow. To be your faithful wife. To be your faithful wife. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In good times and bad. In good times and bad. In joy as well as sorrow. In joy as well as sorrow. I promise to love you unconditionally. I promise to love you unconditionally. To support you in your goals. To support you in your goals. To honor and respect you. To honor and respect you. To laugh with you. To laugh with you. To cry with you. To cry with you. And to cherish you. And to cherish you. For as long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. Grant, repeat after me. <laughs> I grant. I grant. Take you, Emily. Take you, Emily. To be my lawfully wedded wife. To be my lawfully wedded wife. My constant friend. My constant friend. My faithful partner. My faithful partner. And my love from this day forward. And my love from this day forward. In the presence of God. In the presence of God. Our family and friends. Our family and friends. I offer you my solemn vow. I offer you my solemn vow. To be your faithful husband. To be your faithful husband. In sickness and in health. In sickness and health. In good times and bad. In good times and bad. In joy as well as sorrow. In joy as well as sorrow. I promise to love you unconditionally. I promise to love you unconditionally. To support you in your goals. To support you in your goals. To honor and respect you. To honor and respect you. To laugh with you. To laugh with you. To cry with you. To cry with you. And to cherish you. And to cherish you. For as long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. You've chosen to exchange rings to express your love and commitment to each other. The wedding ring is a symbol of eternity. It's an outward sign of an inward and spiritual bond which unites two hearts in endless love. These rings will continually serve to remind you of the holy covenant you've entered in today. Emily, do you have your ring for Grant? Yes. Yeah. You place it on his finger. And repeat after me. Grant. Grant. Sorry. <laughs> I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. Grant, do you have your ring for Emily? Place it on her finger. <laughs> and repeat after me. Emily. Emily. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed.
Almighty God, thank you so much for this day. And thank you for every blessing you give to us. God, today we come together to celebrate Emily and Grant and, and celebrate the decision that they've made to become husband and wife. We ask your blessings upon them, Father, as they begin this new life together. I pray that you will fill them with your spirit of love and peace. I pray that you will be with them when difficult and trying times come. And when good things are there and your love is seen, that they will honor and thank you for it. Thank you for their families that have brought them so far and to this point. And thank you for these friends and family that gather today to celebrate this wonderful time with them. Guard their hearts, guard their lives as they begin this new life together. And above all, let them always seek you for your wise counsel and comfort. All this we pray in the name of Jesus. By the power entrusted to me by the laws of the state and of God, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Therefore, whom God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Grant, you may now stop shaking hands like you did at New Year's Eve and kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, it's my pleasure to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Grant Holland. <laughs>